Hey. Hey, hi. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Hello. That's brutal. Just, just two patriotic girls. So please don't take us the wrong way. Hi. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Thanks for being here with us today on Sunday. It's not just any old Sunday, though, is it, Debbie? It sure isn't. Special Sunday. It is a special Sunday in, in the United Kingdom. That it is. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. All the ladies of the United Kingdom, we genuinely and truly, sincerely wish you a happy Mother's Day. That is true. We hope someone does the dishes for you. Mm -hmm. All the men out there listening, <laughs> do the dishes. <laughs> or kids. Oh, kids. Make, up, make the beds. You know, do something for mom today. And all those out there that maybe, uh, you know, uh, don't have kids, call your moms. Absolutely. We, we know what it's like to not have that option anymore. Call your mommies. That is true. So, Call them. Say you love them. We hope you have a great day today. And I know it, it's not fair to you that your, your, your clocks went ahead this morning and you lost an hour of sleep on Mother's Day. So hopefully you'll get to have a nap. <laughs> what? Have a nap after you watch this. That's always my, my best gift. It's, it's Debbie's favorite gift in life. Before we get started in today's video, a uh, quick thing, as always, um, please like the video if you like the content that we're giving mm -hmm. to you. It always does help us get our videos out to more folks and consider subscribing to the channel up there where Debbie's finger is. <laughs> um, please don't subscribe just to subscribe though, just because we're asking. Make sure you go back and uh, take a look at some of our other stuff first and make sure that you want to join our family here on YouTube. Um, That's right. You can also check out the link in the description to join our Facebook page. And mm -hmm. of course, we always want to thank our patrons over at Patreon. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Uh, we truly, truly uh, appreciate you so very much. You get exclusive content only on Patreon uh, that you won't get anywhere else. And Debbie, um, next month you'll be doing, um, she's been doing her cooking videos over mm -hmm. there. And uh, we haven't officially made a decision yet, but I'm, I'm, I'm pushing for the British dish for next month to be mm -hmm. the Cornish pasty. I think I'm going to try it. Yep. I'm, I'm excited. I hope you I'm do. I'm studying my recipes, get my nerve up. I think you're going to make it happen. Now, we don't eat beef, <laughs> so we're going to try like chicken or turkey. So in the comments, yeah. let us know what you think. Um, don't get mad at us for the non-beef thing. <laughs> don't forget, Travel Wednesday, is gonna, this one. This one's coming up. Yes. It'll be the first one out of the United Kingdom. We're going somewhere else. That's right. So excited. Passport's ready. So make sure you will watch that video. Make help sure us, you join us Wednesday. Yeah, help us show YouTube that, you know, hey, we can do other stuff. That's we don't right. have to just stay in one area. We can travel the world together. That's right. We can virtual travel. Together. All of us. <laughs> That's together. <laughs> together. All of us. In the same place. At the same time. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> this video, um, this kind of made me think of Mother's Day because uh, my mom used to drive us around as kids on, mm -hmm. on Sundays and look at all the really expensive mansions we could never afford. Yes. And I still like to do that. Yeah. I don't go with her, though. I like to do it at night, though, so I can, like... Peek in people's houses. Peek She's in the windows. Peeker. She, she like, not... I don't care what you're doing in there. I'm going to see how you decorated your house. <laughs> Please, nobody think we're stalkers. I don't have any... Anything. I think more people do it than don't. Looking through the windows from a car, don't take that the wrong way. She's not, like, walking right. and looking in the window. Like, <laughs> no, walking up to the window. This isn't Debbie going... Driving by. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it is. If you look out your window right now and you see a Debbie... And I'll be like, does that wall color really match that couch? Are you serious? Oh, Lord. <laughs> house shopping in England. Yeah, we're going to go house shopping <laughs> for places that probably aren't even on the market. And we could never afford if we lived 500 lifetimes. <laughs> but let's go look. You could join us, won't you? There's nothing like a good country home. And in England, we're absolutely spoiled for choice. From modest country getaways to gargantuan castles and palaces. Castle. There's something in England Sorry. to suit every taste. But whilst most of us could only dream about calling such magnificent houses home, we're fortunate that nowadays a lot of these places are open to the public. Ah, In this video, cool. I'm counting down 10 of what I consider to be the grandest and most magnificent country houses in England. From one of the most iconic houses to ever grace our TV screens, to one of the largest privately owned country houses in England, here is my list of top 10 most magnificent stately homes to really poor, visit in England. <laughs> that's all I can think is like, we're about to feel poor as poor can be. Yeah, but that's okay. We're dreaming. Yeah, Kicking world. things off is the spectacular Hello. Harewood House, situated close to Leeds in West Yorkshire. Wow. I've visited Harewood a number of times over the past years, and it never fails to impress. Built between 1759 and what? 1771 by Edwin Lascelles, 
First Baron Harewood. Harewood House has a bit of a dubious past. Massive. The Lascelles were wealthy plantation and slave owners, whom having accrued a magnificent wealth, invested it in the construction of Harewood. Designed by the celebrated architect John mm. Carr, the house is certainly pleasing on the eye. Flowers and it sits spiders. within one of the most beautiful oh. landscapes in England. Hmm. But wow, that is huge. Oh my gosh. I could not imagine cleaning that. <laughs> you would have help. Still. If you can afford that, you better be able to afford help. <laughs> I can see you. I forgot something in the other. Oh my now. God. I'd have to be able to afford to pay someone to go retrieve the <laughs> items that I left. I lost this here. Can you help me find it? And <laughs> the interiors too are utterly magnificent, with Robert Adam working his usual magic. Mm -hmm. In fact, these are recognized as some of his finest interiors, and the luxurious long gallery is certainly a sight to behold. That's insane. What makes Harewood so impressive is its beautiful design. The exterior of the house is done in the Palladian style, and unlike most other Georgian <laughs> Palladian houses what? in England Ever. that might appear quite similar, Sorry, buddy. Harewood has a certain panache about it, and is one of my favourite examples of Good English Lord. Palladianism. Next up is the imposing Hardwick Hall. I actually only visited Hardwick for the first time in 2020, and to say that I was blown away would be Whoa. an understatement. Built as a prodigy house, this means Hardwick was built with the sole intention of showing off and was designed to showcase its owner's magnificent wealth and influence. I think that's the house was built by Bess of Hardwick, whom having married no fewer than four times, amassed a ginormous wealth, second only to that of Queen Elizabeth. Of course, really? she required a house worthy of her status, and completed in 1597, Hardwick left no one in any doubt about its provenance. 1597. Look at those cool little things on the top. A little scrolly and the E and the S. That's pretty cool. Very ornate. Yeah, it is. Built to the rules of symmetry and said to contain more glass than wall, the National Trust's really? Hardwick Hall is one of the finest examples of Elizabethan architecture in England. The hall is indeed very striking, and okay. you may recognise it as Malfoy Manor in Harry Potter. Hardwick's okay. tapestry hung interiors are equally as impressive. <laughs> Again, clearly designed to impress. The interiors are literally fit for royalty, Jeez. with the spectacular long gallery serving as the largest surviving Elizabethan long gallery in England. The internal spaces at Hardwick are so vast yeah, that they absolutely have to be seen to be believed. Hardwick Hall is perhaps the grandest prodigy house in England, and was home to one of England's greatest women. It truly is a That's house I mean. worthy of recognition. Highclere Castle is likely most recognisable as the home of the Crawley family in the hit TV series Downton Abbey. Never seen Although it. Downton is set in Yorkshire, Sorry. this architecturally spectacular house is actually situated in Hampshire nice. and sits within well, okay. a stunning 1,000 acre estate. The Highclere estate has a long history, dating back to Anglo-Saxon times. The house we see today, however, was built in 1679 when it was purchased by Robert Sawyer, Attorney General to Charles II, and also great-grandfather to the current Earl of Carnarvon. Highclere, however, owns its current striking appearance to Sir John Barry, the architect responsible for designing the House of Parliament, who really? in 1842 transformed the house into the spectacular castle we know and love today. The castle is particularly beautiful, and like many other great houses, features a stunning landscape designed by the legendary landscape gardener Lancelot Capability Brown. The grounds feature no fewer than six 18th century follies and temples, and the 1,000 acre parkland has grade one listed status. Long I'm gonna pause for a second. I already kind of hear him over his own music is like overtaking yeah. his voice. So sorry, it it's not us, it's him. Um, no, just backing up real quick to the House of Parliament. Mm -hmm. um, that is, to me, one of the most beautiful places, one of the most beautiful buildings mm -hmm. in the world. Um, it is striking every time I've seen it in movies and stuff like that. I always think that, and I've just never said it. So, now you know. <laughs> the pointy things on top. I'm sure the they pointy have things. A, I'm sure they have a, a name, but they're the pointy things on top. <laughs> Debbie would like to know what the little pointy things are on top. I, uh, they're always going to be the pointy things on top. Even if you hear the proper name? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Most definitely. I'm already looking at this. I just, I feel really poor. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we've got I mean, what? don't we all, though? Because who the <laughs> heck? I mean, again, I know these aren't exactly houses. You can go buy. Um, but, but still. somebody did it sometime. Back in, like, many, many hundreds of years ago. 1700, but still. I wonder what they cost then to make. Perplexing. Hmm. 
Lake House is a beautiful Elizabethan period home situated near to Warminster in the southwest of England. This stunning prodigy house is another historic home purported to be one of the finest examples of Elizabethan architecture and is the seat of the Marquis of Bath. <laughs> Built by Sir John Thin between 1568 and 1580, Longleat was the first of the so-called prodigy houses to be built in England, and allegedly the first to be built with the sole intention of wooing the monarch. It's a spectacularly beautiful country home, and its architect Robert Smithson was one of the most celebrated architects of the time. Wow. The house is oh, quite beautiful. exceptional, and is set within 900 acres of beautiful Capability Brown Landscape Parkland. Longleat is famous for being the first stately home to open to the public, and mm. also home to the first safari park outside of Africa. What? Amazing. Oh, 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 oh. A safari park? <laughs> Where? Safari. Where is it? I want to see it. In. Is it here? Longleat has <laughs> remained in the hands of the same family since its inception nearly 450 years ago, and today is home to the seventh Marquis of Bath. Where's the safari park? Lime is an... No! <laughs> You can't bring up a safari park and then just <laughs> not just show drop that. This in there. Let me just yeah, safari here. Safari park. Safari park there. <laughs> Let's just look at the house. Okay, sir. I wish you would have put that in your video. Um, we need to maybe take a look into that a little bit closer. Let us know if we should. I think that would be very I'm curious, interesting, and yeah. educational, and and just cool. Mm -hmm. Lime park makes me. <laughs> Let's just go on the lime park. Absolutely mm. glorious country house and park nestled on the edge of the Peak see. District okay, in yeah. Cheshire. Yeah. And the Lime District. was home to the ancient Lee family for over 550 years, with the current house being constructed in the mid 16th century by Piers Lay. Although mm. piecemeal wow. modifications were made in the 17th century, it was in 1725 that the house underwent a massive nice. transformation that resulted in the splendid neoclassical Palladian masterpiece we see today. Lime is a wonderfully beautiful house, combining its Tudor- Doesn't it kind of look like oh, the White House a little bit in the front? Oh, kind of. This a little bit. Like the big tall pillars. Yeah. Is it like seems the like the uh, 1600s, whatever. Um, but a lot of big, huge homes. In the 1500s? Wasn't, you know, most of these homes are the 1500s. I think this is one of the newer ones. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, good lord. But again, these weren't just for your average folks. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> These weren't for people like us. Maybe they were our ancestors. No. I know. <laughs> we were serving the people in that. <laughs> we weren't even good enough to serve those people. <laughs> we were serving the people that were serving those people's grandparents. I don't know. To the core with Georgian Palladian architecture and stunning 19th century interiors. As if this wasn't enough, the house is further complemented by its surrounding moorlands and formal gardens. Yeah, that's beautiful. Lime is a truly magnificent house, and you might recognise it from the BBC's 1995 TV adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. Lime stands in as Mr Darcy's Pemberley estate, testament to its incredible reputation. Now in the care of the National Trust, Lime is one of the most impressive houses in the Trust's portfolio, and a very popular tourist destination. Is that part of the house too? Like Hardwick Hall, Burley House is a stunning example of an Elizabethan prodigy house. Okay, that's built for amazing. and largely designed by William Cecil, Lord Whoa. High Treasurer to Queen Elizabeth, this incredible structure is one of the finest 16th century houses in existence today. Situated in Stamford in Lincolnshire, construction of this spectacular house was begun in 1555 with the erection of the East Range. It Jeez. took around 32 years for building work to be fully concluded, however, with the north front not being completed until 1587. Wow. Like so many other great prodigy houses, Burley was designed to impress, and with Cecil being one of the most powerful courtiers in the it's land, impressive. absolutely no expense was spared on this spectacular home. Oh, Furthermore, yeah. with hopes of one day housing the monarch herself, Burley was certainly grand enough and large enough to entice the Queen and her enormous entourage. The scale of Burley is also quite amazing. Featuring 35 major rooms and 80 smaller ones, this enormous palace of a house is like nothing else of this period. Architecturally spectacular and featuring decorative chimneys that dominate the skyline, Burley That's is insane. one of the most magnificent country houses in England. Amen to that. Wrong. No top list would be complete without the inclusion of the mighty Blenheim Palace. Situated in what? Oxfordshire, Blenheim is the historic that seat of the Dukes of Marlborough, with the estate being gifted to the first Duke, Good John Churchill, following Good his one. military success in the War of the Spanish Succession. 
The okay. palace has remained in the hands of the Dukes of Marlborough ever since, and was significantly the childhood home of British Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill. Built between 1705 and 1722, Blenheim is the only non-royal house in the UK to bear the really? title palace, and also enjoys UNESCO World mm -hmm. Heritage Site status. Definitely like Castle palace. Howard, Blenheim was designed by architect John Vanbrugh and Nicholas Hawksmoor, Good and serves Lord. as one of the finest examples of Baroque architecture anywhere in England. In addition to the colossal, it's just like that would have had to take forever that, to yeah. build. I was wondering that earlier um, when they said the one house before this took thirty two years, because obviously back then you would have to take a lot longer mm -hmm. to do things, um, modern day technology. But like you know, depending on your age, I, I wouldn't even bother because I'm like I'm gonna be dead by the time it's done. Right? <laughs> like I won't get to enjoy it. No kidding. You gotta start when you're like five. Maybe. <laughs> This also, is house, but Blenheim <laughs> also features 2,000 acres of parkland designed by Capability Brown and 90 acres. acres of spectacular formal gardens. It's no wonder Blenheim is so popular with visitors and it serves as one of the most popular tourist destinations in Britain. You see why? Yeah. Nestled in the Derbyshire Dales sits one of England's greatest and most famous homes, likely recognised as the home of Mr Darcy in 2005's film adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, Chatsworth yes. serves as the seat of the Duke of Devonshire and has been the home of the Cavendish Whoa. family Whoa. since Bess of Hardwick and her husband William Cavendish purchased the estate in 15... Look at the pillar, like the... what is that? Yeah. What is that? It's hard to say. I don't, like, it's like all... Marble? Yeah, like marble. Thank you. I can't think of words. <laughs> <laughs> You're the, she's the better half of my brain. Not always. Yeah, you are. That is stunning. Look at the detail. Mm -hmm. Holy crap, England. Stop making us fall in love with you. <laughs> it's getting to be very, I'm feeling one-sided. <laughs> <laughs> this is stupid pretty. I'm sorry. 1549. Cavendish was Bess's second husband and had amassed a small fortune as a commissioner for the dissolution of the monasteries. Crazy. Having purchased a number of properties together in Bess's home county of Derbyshire, it was Chatsworth where they chose to construct a magnificent Elizabethan home. Little of this remains today, however, with the house being completely remodelled <laughs> in 1707 by the first Duke and further expanded and modernised by the sixth Duke in the late 18th century. The wow. result is one of the most opulent and easily recognisable homes in the world nice. and one of the UK's most visited tourist attractions. One of the reasons why visitors keep coming back is the magnificent interiors. The painted hall, for example, is one of the most exquisite indoor spaces oh, and the Lord. magnificent library is recognised as containing the largest private collection of books anywhere in the UK. The grounds too are absolutely exquisite, with key features being a monumental Victorian rock garden and a magnificent 300-year-old okay, cascade. Yes. Yes. Chatsworth <laughs> is truly breathtaking and is well worth its status it's as one of the UK's yeah. most spectacular stately homes. Here's there. Yeah. Castle Howard is one of the largest, grandest and most iconic stately homes in the UK. Awesome. Situated in the Howardian Hills in Rydale in North Yorkshire, this colossal stately home has been in the hands of the Howard family for over 300 years. Built for Charles Howard, the third Earl of Carlisle, the house was dramatist John Vanbrugh's first ever commission and largely constructed in the Baroque style. With construction beginning in 1699, the bulk of the house was completed in just 10 years. That said, it took around 100 years for the house to be considered yeah. finished. Castle Whoa. Howard sits at the heart of a 9,000 acre estate, which in addition to the house comprises parkland, farmland, temples, monuments and mock castle walls. Are you the freaking kidding me with this? Indeed. Are you freaking kidding me with this? Wow. I mean, we have fountains here, but... Yeah, but not like on somebody's... <laughs> Well, I guess we do. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. This place is nuts. Ten years for the bulk of it to be finished. No, and but a hundred years later. Well, you keep adding on and adding on. But who's paying on. for that? Well, the family, I assume. I mean, yeah. but oh, okay. That's pretty wow. awesome. I'd like to see. I mean, there's no video back then, guys. Not dumb. Right. <laughs> but I'd love to see how they did that. How they make the houses back then. Mm-hmm. 
maybe we can find a video or a recommendation we for could. one. I mean, but I would are love you to interested know. Interested in that, and I would like to look at your your cur the current houses and homes in in mm -hmm. the United Kingdom because we don't know anything about those. We saw those thatched roofs in the Norfolk yep. video we did, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. Um, wasn't that something else I wanted to pet in the UK? Yeah, <laughs> I want to pet the UK's <laughs> roofs, thatched roofs, and and, yep. the, and your grass. And the grass. Yeah, <laughs> and all your dogs and cats. Of course, not the cats. I'm sorry, I'm allergic. I'll pet them with a the glove on. <laughs> Sorry, this is just insanely awesome. I'm really it's enjoying this video. extraordinary. Castle Howard is particularly iconic as it serves as the home of Sebastian Flight in the film and TV adaptations of Brideshead. More recently, however, the house featured as the country home of the Duke of Hastings in the popular Netflix production Bridgerton. What makes Castle Howard uh, okay. so spectacular is its extravagant Whoa. architecture and <laughs> opulent interiors. The Great Hall, for example, serves as one of the most elaborate and magnificent indoor spaces anywhere in the UK and is truly a sight to behold. Okay. Castle Howard is my personal favourite country home in the UK and is bested only in terms of size by my number one entry. Oh, we're getting yeah. number one. Coming in at number one what, is the gargantuan Wentworth Woodhouse, situated in Rotherham in South Yorkshire and currently undergoing a multi-million pound restoration. Wentworth Woodhouse is one of the largest houses in Europe and features the longest facade of any house in England. Yeah. Largely built by Thomas Watson Wentworth, the first Marquis of Rockingham, this incredible structure replaced an earlier Jacobean house that had served as the historic seat of the Earl of Stafford. Thomas had inherited the Wentworth estate and fortune from his father, who had in turn inherited it from his maternal uncle, William Wentworth, the second Earl of Stafford. This was something that had been bitterly resented by the Earl's cousin, Thomas Wentworth, who had fully expected to inherit the family fortune well, and title when the Earl died childless in 1695. Oh, no. Thomas Watson Wentworth then found himself in possession of the mighty Wentworth Woodhouse and not to be outdone by his jealous Wentworth cousins, who were busy at work creating the nearby Wentworth Castle, set about creating the most magnificent house England had ever seen. Built in two campaigns, the Baroque-style West Range took place between 1725 and 1735. The paint had yet to dry on this, however, before Thomas turned his eye to the erection of an even larger and grander East Range. Built in the more fashionable Palladian style, this new range was completed in around 1750 and was considered the first great Palladian house in England. The interiors of Wentworth Woodhouse are considered some of the finest Georgian period interiors anywhere in the country and it is reckoned that the house has around 365 rooms. The standout piece the has to be a breathtaking marble saloon, <laughs> featured not so long back in the Downton Abbey movie. Wentworth is truly colossal in every sense, and when its restoration is oh, complete, wow. will likely serve oh, yeah. as one of the finest country houses open to the public anywhere in the world. Dude, the prospect of bringing this oh, fantastic home yeah. back to life is truly exciting, and I can't wait to see the results. Oh man. There you go guys, that was my top 10 list of so most that's magnificent the whole top 10. So I have to say my favorite, and I gotta go back, was the, uh, how can I forget these things so quickly? Which one was it? Was the one, Chatsworth. Yeah, number three. That was my favorite. Yours? You said it was at the time. She's changed her mind now. No, I like that last one. I like that, that whatever style of well, architecture that was. Palladium? We need to understand these styles of architecture, because I don't know them. All I know is I the simple ones. Victorian? I think, is Edwardian a time period or a style of home? And the Victorians both. And we do have Victorian I homes know. here in America, even in our neighborhood. Yes. Our neighborhood is overwrought <laughs> with Victorian homes, yes. except our house. Yeah. Ours is just an American house. <laughs> an American house. It's American. <laughs> um, but no, I really enjoyed those. Let us know. Please let us know which ones you visited. What's your favorite? Um, mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite that wasn't on the list? I'm sure you do. Um, Chatsworth to me was beautiful. I think I just remember why I know that name because we just did the Peak District last week yeah. for Travel Wednesday. And I remember he did say that the video too that was in there. And I think people were a little upset that was not in that, that video. Mm -hmm. But hey, we didn't even realize that we were <laughs> going to take a peek at it anyway. Yeah, so we should desire. get to things eventually. Yeah. <laughs> um, but those were incredibly amazing. And um, I go into a lot of these videos with with... With no expectations. Mm -hmm. This one I did not know what to expect. Um, when I think of country houses here, I don't <laughs> think of like five, six hundred year old giant palace, palace castle yeah. mixed 
Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you have some, some regular homes that are, you know, mm-hmm. awesome too. And I would like to see some of those too. Let us know if you would like us to take a look at more current modern housing and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that I definitely have, have an interest in. I know you do because we've talked about Heck it. Yeah. Heck yeah. I like looking at houses. I wish we would have got to see more inside a little bit. Yeah, it'd be nice. Um, but still super cool. Like, but I'm feeling this style wouldn't have been my style anyway. So You don't see, we have a kind of an, an it argument It needs to look that. like a castle palace on the outside. But not on the inside. Modern everything inside. See, but that, that'd be so awkward to walk into a awkward, house. But I would still love it. But I'm with you. Like my thing though with that is I could, if we lived in a house like that, and I know people don't really typically live in houses like that. Yeah. You feel like you're in a museum and you wouldn't want to touch anything. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the downside. Yeah. And I surely wouldn't know what the heck to do with um, just taking a guess 40 foot walls. <laughs> you play tennis inside. I mean, you could, I don't we know. Could. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hope that everybody enjoyed that today if you did please drop a like on the video we'd appreciate it very much and again of course consider subscribing to the channel um but uh that that was fun for me you know, i had a blast i too. it was really really pretty more. i'd like to see more of the um the garden you know mm-hmm. more of the um actual like surroundings of it too but yeah. I, that other one um the name of it started with an l um i'm gonna pronounce it wrong i guarantee it Longleat House has the safari park, and I want to know about that. Yes, that was interesting. Yeah. So let us know what you think, and um, I hope that, let us know in the comments, too, if you're planning on joining us Wednesday, Travel Wednesday, Mm -hmm. for going outside the UK. Now, we're not going to do that every Travel Wednesday. We've decided every other for now. We'll see what happens. Um, Again, don't forget on Patreon, we have some exclusive content, new stuff, and we will be putting some some, some changes in on Patreon for April. Uh So make sure you uh, stay tuned on that. Head over there and check it out. So thanks so much for watching, and happy Mother's Day over there in the United Kingdom. Um, And we just hope you guys have a great, great day, and get a nap in. You lost an hour of sleep. That's not fair to you. Yeah, get your nap. (laughs) Get a nap, for sure. Have a great rest of your day, and um, we'll see you on Wednesday for Travel Wednesday. Until next time. Bye, guys. Bye.